everybody. My name is James Wilson, and welcome to the Chain Breaker channel. That's it. 2019 is over. 2020 has just begun. And now is the time where everybody says that timeless phrase, new year, new me. But let me ask you, is it really a new you? Yeah, we can all agree that 2019 is over and 2020 has just begun. But are you bringing the old mindset into a new year? Because if, if you are, it's not a new you and your 2020 will be like just the other years that have passed. But I don't want that for you. I don't want that for myself. That is why I am here with you today with the five tips that will help you get your 2020 the way you want it. I personally have wanted to start a YouTube channel for probably a year and a half, but I always talk myself out of it. Nervousness, fearful, what am I gonna say? What am I gonna do? I don't have the equipment, I don't have the time, uh, I don't have the expertise. All of those things derailed me from accomplishing a goal that I really wanted to for myself. But this year, I said, you know what? I'm gonna buckle down and I'm gonna do it. And here I am. So without further ado, let's get into it. And I want you to go over this video with a pen and paper so you can write some of this stuff down. Some of this might be new to you, but, some of, but you might already know some of the other stuff. So it might just be a little refresher and a little reminder to kickstart your new year. So let's get into it. With the number one thing that you need in all areas of your life is the right mindset. Bishop T.D. Jakes, a great speaker, Probably says it best, it is not the movement of the clock that brings about the new you. It is the movement of your mind. Think about that. Time will pass. That's just a fact. But if your mind doesn't change, you will continue to cycle through the same areas of your life over and over again without making any change or even going behind in what you want in what you want and where you want to be in life. Jim Rohn, another amazing speaker says it says it this way. You can have more than you've ever had because you can become more than you've ever been. Think about that. You can have more than you've ever had because you bec you can become more. See, it depends on you. New year, new me. It's your decision. So one thing about mindset is a lot of people write down their goals and a lot of people set what they want for their life. And I truly believe when you do that, you're sending a message to the universe. Hey, I want this to happen. I want this for myself, for my family, for my friends, for my business. And the universe is going to respond in a way that a lot of people aren't ready for because the universe is going to say, okay, you want this? Prove it. Go out and earn it. And it will send hurdles and challenges at your goals and dreams to see if you can push through them. I'll give you for an example. Yesterday, before I made this video, yesterday I put my whiteboard up at night with some stickies, the ones that you peel on the back of and stick them so paintings and stuff can stick that I put on my whiteboard. My whiteboard, I put about four of them on. And I was like, okay, tomorrow, tomorrow I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna do my video, finally. In the middle of the night, I hear a boom, crash. I wake up, my whiteboard fell. The stickies weren't strong enough, I guess, and the whole thing just came crashing down, and I didn't have any more stickies left, so I thought to myself, oh man, you know, what am I gonna support the whiteboard on? They're not gonna be able to see it. I'm gonna have to crouch down and do something like that. Maybe I shouldn't do the video tomorrow. Maybe I should wait till I go to Target, get more stickies, but no. That 2020 mindset that we're gonna have about not letting anything get in our way kicked in and said, you know what? We're gonna make this happen. So what I do, I moved, my dining room table back, I took a little nightstand from, from the bedroom and I'm using that to support the whiteboard. Find a way to get it done. That's how your mindset should be. And then everything builds off of that after that. So number two is wants and needs. A lot of our goals are only what we want. I want to lose 10 pounds. I want to get a promotion. I want to be more active in the church that I'm in. What it needs to shift is to needs or 
must-haves. All right, needs and must-haves. Tony Robbins says it this way. We don't get what we want in life. We get what we have to have. And just think about it. Want. Have. Have to have it. It sounds more powerful when you say, I have to have this, other than I want it. Because wanting leaves room for error, or it leaves room for flexibility. It leaves room for doubt, fear, judgment. Have to have it means doesn't matter what anybody says, doesn't matter what comes in my way, I have to have this and I'm gonna get it done. So when you have your goals, don't change it, don't have them as just wants, have them as must-haves. I must get a raise, I have to lose 10 pounds, I must have financial freedom. That sounds different, right, than I want a raise, I want financial freedom, and I want to lose 10 pounds. So shift your goals from wants to needs, must-haves. Because that will bring us to number three, momentum. Momentum is key in achieving anything, scholastically, spiritually, physically, mentally, at your job, in your business. And when it comes to momentum, we need to constantly be asking ourselves this question. Okay, I used a big marker for this, so you all can see it, but what's next? What's next? Because momentum is a two-way street, okay? On this side, you achieve something, you gain the momentum. You get that raise. You, your business makes that first check, all right? But on the second side, on the left-hand side, there's the, the loss of momentum. Your boss says no to the raise. Your business hasn't been profitable in two years. To keep that momentum, you have to ask what's next. Because what's next will allow you to see your, your successes and allow you not to get complacent with them. Let's say you get the raise and then, oh, I don't need to work hard anymore because I'm making this kind of money. Well, you stop working hard, your boss is gonna fire you, so now you're making no money. Or you didn't get the raise. Okay, what's next? I still want that raise. What can I do better? What skill can I acquire for the company? What, what topic do I need to master to be a subject matter expert in my field, to be more valuable? Who do I need to connect with that has the, stuff, the, the position that I want? How can I connect with a person like that and see how they achieved it? What's next will allow you to keep your momentum, not only in achieving your goals, but when you might sometimes fall short because you can see where you succeeded in that area and say, okay, what's next? I just, I just need to do this little, this little extra and I'll get what I want. Number four, and this is something that is overlooked, I think, by a lot of people. Write what it is that you want down. I was reading an article on Inc.com and it had some, some pretty scary numbers in there. I'll write them down for you here. Okay, that is 60% in six months. And that's not 60% of people achieving their New Year's resolutions, goals, and dreams in six months. That is 60% of people quitting after six months. Okay, and now if you thought if you, that, that made you uncomfortable, maybe you thought, oh, that was me last year. That's certainly, I certainly fell into that category last year a little bit. Inc.com also said 25% of people quit after seven days. Seven days, not even a month into the new year and people have given up on their resolutions, their goals, their dreams, their wants and desires. Okay, we do not wanna be in this area. We wanna be at this number. Right here. The 42%, you are 42% more likely, according to Inc.com, to achieve your goals if you write them down. And you can write them down in, a, in a, several ways, whether it's on the computer, on a Word document, or I have a little journal here where I write my thoughts down, I have my goals in the back here, you know, different goals here, or you can even have something like this. This is a 
day goal journal. I got this at Borders and it has things like wonderful things that happened today, three struggles I encountered or possible solutions for these struggles. See, when you write stuff down, you maintain momentum because you can see it, you put it out there. And you, by writing it down, it becomes a must have. And when it becomes a must have, your mind will figure out a way that this has to happen, this has to get done. So you see how this all builds on, on everybody, right? So you write them down to gain momentum. You gain momentum because they're must-haves. And they're must-haves, your mind will figure it out. Look at that crazy arrow. Your mind will figure out how to achieve must-haves. Now the last thing, number five, is this. Accountability. And actually four and five can go, ahead, go hand in hand a little bit because when you write something down, you're kind of accountable to yourself for accomplishing it, wouldn't you agree? As to where you put it on paper and you say, okay, this is what I want, me. Now we can go back and review it. Am I getting there? Am I closer? How far away? When is this gonna happen? You know, am I making progress? Whether it's if you just have it in your head, it's easy to forget or just push it, push it out. Your, your mind will say, hey, didn't, didn't we wanna lose Weren't we gonna lose 10 pounds? Weren't we gonna make more money? Weren't we gonna explore our career? But it's easy to just say, oh, I can't do that now, I'm busy, when it's in your head. But when it's on paper, it's real. It's real, when you see it, it's, it's there. But one thing I wanted to do is to show you another two little help, helpful tips with accountability. One I call PPA. That's pain, pleasure, accountability. When you have something like this, it's either painful or a reward. Pain or pleasure, simple. Let's say you wanna read 10 pages in a business book every night. And if you don't do that, then you have to pay, pay someone else who's reading that book, maybe a friend of yours or something, $100. And that also leads me to the second thing, accountability partner. So you pay your accountability partner $100. Ooh, I don't wanna, I don't want to lose that $100 again. Tomorrow I'm going to read that book. Tomorrow I'm going to read maybe two chapters because I really want to make sure I don't, I don't lose that $100 or prepare more in advance. So that's pain. The pleasure aspect, the second P, is say, let's say you want to read a book a month. I'm going to read a book a month and then once I do that, I'll treat myself to a movie or I'll treat myself to an ice cream or something. Something where you treat yourself, you reward yourself for getting stuff done that you said you were going to get done. And also, share that with your accountability partner. Now, accountability partner should be someone who's not your spouse or your family members because they love and care for you more than somebody else might that's in business or, or what have you. And that might allow them to take off the slack, you know, where it's like, you, didn't, you, didn't, you said you were going to do this. What happened? Oh, I was too tired or I got busy at work. Oh, well, okay. Well, just make sure you get it done tomorrow or when you can. No. We want somebody who's going to say, hey, you said you were going to get this done. Where is it? Uh, I was too tired. Doesn't matter. You said you were going to get it done. So what are you going to do to get it done? Someone who's a little bit more forceful, a little more action-oriented involved. So that's it, everybody. One through five, mindset. Must-haves, momentum, writing down your goals, and accountability. And I wanted to leave you with a little bonus one as well. Number six bonus when it comes to 2020 and your goals, dreams, and desires is have some fun with it. A lot of times we sit down and goal making is such this long process and sometimes you don't know what you want and you get frustrated or you write down what you want and you don't see how it could possibly happen. But remember, have fun with it. You know, let's say you have a goal of creating some, some financial you know, prospect or financial wealth for yourself and you miss that goal, but you have fun doing it, you're gonna to wanna to set another goal for that or keep going after it, and that's gonna keep momentum, and that's gonna keep your mind happy as well. You know, some of the goals that I have for this year aren't all just business or money-based. You know, I have some goals here like going skydiving, you know? I wanna skydive, swim with dolphins, you know, take my parents out to a fancy restaurant, Things like that to kind of feed, feed the fire, 
you know, that you can reward yourself a little bit when you achieve all your other goals. So thank you again so much for being with me this day, this fourth day in the new year. And if you have anything that works for yourself that you'd like to share, let me know in the comments. I'd love to connect with you and know what's working for you this year. And if you liked what you saw in this video, leave a like and leave a comment. And if you didn't like what you saw or heard in this video, let me know too. I want to improve this. I want to make this something that not only benefits myself, but benefits you as, as a consumer, benefits you as, as a, a potential business leader, as a potential student. You know, that's the goal of this channel is to benefit. We all come together and benefit each other with our knowledge, our experiences, and our stories. So with that being said, get after it this year for 2020. New year, new me, you decide.